In this video, we're going to look at a couple of examples of redox titrations that are a little bit more complicated than we saw in the first video. So the first one I want to go through with you is about um, solder. So we've got some information there that we have to process about solder. So we told that it contains those three metals, antimony, lead and tin. And when it's reacted with the aqueous acid, the solder will dissolve. So the metals dissolve to form those three ions, Sb3+, plus Pb2+, plus and Sn2+. Plus. The solution is then reacted with dichromate ions. And the important bit to know is only the tin 2 plus ions will react and they get oxidized to Sn4+. Plus. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write the half equations for those two um, processes that are taking place. So there they are on the board and obviously we need to combine these two half equations to make the overall redox equation and hopefully you can see what we need to do. We've got two electrons involved in this oxidation process and six involved in the reduction process. So if we multiply this one by three and add it to this one, these electrons will cancel out because we'll both equal six. And there you can see the overall redox equation and uh, the electrons I haven't included because they have cancelled out. The important thing from this equation is this one to three mole ratio between those two ions. So we look at the question now, you can see down at the bottom here, we've got some information. So we're told that there's 10 grams of solder, it's been dissolved in acid. Remember that converts the metal atoms into metal ions. It's made up to one decimeter cubed. And here's the sort of tricky part now. 25 cm cubed of that solution was, was taken out and needed 20 centimeters cubed of this concentration of acidified potassium dichromate 6 and we have to calculate the percentage biomass of tin in the solder. So like I did in the first video we're going to visualize, try and visualize what's gone on in this experiment and hopefully that will help us um, see a way through to the answer. And there it is as a series of pictures so we've got our 10 grams of solder in this flask. The acid's poured in that converts the, the metal atoms in the solder to the metal ions as was as we were told in the information at the start. And obviously we've got some H plus ions in there from the acid. That's made up to one decimeter cubed. And then here's the tricky part, 25 cm cubed of that's taken out. So we've still got all of those four ions present and it's gonna be titrated with this 0.0175 moles per decimeter cubed um, acidified potassium dichromate solution and we were told that 20 cm cubed was needed. So the first thing we're going to do is calculate the moles of dichromate ions used in the titration because we have all the information that we need to do that. So there's the concentration. Concentration times volume in decimeters cubed gives us the moles. And that comes out at 3.5 times 10 to the minus 4. The mole ratio in the redox equation tells us that to work out the moles of tin 2 plus, we need to multiply the moles of dichromate by 3. So that's what I've done down there. And you can see the moles of tin 2 plus are 1.05 times 10 to the minus 3. And now for the tricky part. So we know that the moles of tin 2 plus in the conical flask used in the titration, in that 25 cm cubed in other words, was this many. But in the original um, solution, there must have been 40 times that amount. Because to turn 25 into 1000 cm cubed, you multiply by 40. So we do the same with the moles and we get the moles of tin 2 plus in here comes out at 0.042. Where did those tin 2 plus ions come from? They came from the solder, the tin atoms in the solder when that reacted with this aqueous acid and for every mole of, of tin you get the same number of moles of tin 2 plus 
So if that was the number of moles of tin tuples in here, then they came from the solder. That means that there must be the same number of moles of tin in the solder itself. We're now going to convert this to grams of tin. So what mass of tin, if we know the moles, we multiply by the MR of tin, which is 118.7, and we now know that of that 10 grams of solder, 4.99 grams were actually tin. And the very final step, I've just managed to squeeze on the bottom here, the percentage of tin, so we know that 4.99 grams of the 10 belong to the tin. So 4.99 divided by 10 multiplied by 100 will give us the percentage of tin. And therefore that's coming out at 49.9%. The second question I've got for you involves um, a different redox reaction again, just to try and put some variety into the video. So we've got 25 cm cubed of hydrogen peroxide solution. That's poured into a 250 cm cubed volumetric flask. It's made up to 250 with the distilled water. A tenth of that is taken out and titrated against 0.02 moles per decimeter cubed potassium manganate 7 solution. And there's the volume of MnO4 minus ions that were needed. And we have to calculate the concentration of that original hydrogen peroxide solution. So again, we'll start with the half equations and take it from there. So there they are there. We've got the oxidation process. We've lost two electrons We're over there. And here's the reduction process because we're gaining these five electrons. So we need the electrons to um, cancel out when we add the two equations together. Now this time we've got to multiply each equation. So we're going to get them electrons both up to 10. So if we multiply this one by five, and this one by two, that will take those electrons up to 10 on either side and they will cancel out. So there's the overall redox equation. Um, you can see that I've, I'm underlining the H plus ions and that's because as a teacher, I see very often um, slightly wrong answers here. So if we think about the H plus ions, we've got eight in this one. So that would take it up to 16. So we'd have 16 on the left, five times those two are 10. So sometimes I do see 16 H plus there, 10 on that side. Now, unfortunately that wouldn't get you the marks because you should always represent the equation in its simplest form. So we've got to cancel the H pluses and that would take those 16 down to six there and obviously the 10 on that side would disappear. So just be careful when you see the same species either side of the arrow, make sure that you cancel them down. The important thing um, obviously in this redox equation is this mole ratio here. So we've got a five to two mole ratio between the H2O2 and the MnO4 minus. So there's the visualization for you. So we've got our original 25 cm cubed of hydrogen peroxide solution. So that's in this flask. That's what we've got to calculate the concentration of at the very end of the calculation. It's topped up to 250 cm cubed with this distilled water. We take 25 cm cubed out. So there's that scaling factor that we're going to have to remember to include and some acid is added to create the acid conditions required for the redox reaction and the titration involves this 0.02 moles per decimeter cubed um, KMnO4 solution and we were told that we needed 38 centimeters cubed um, for the reaction. So again I'm going to leave the diagrams on the board and try and um, build up the answers um, on the whiteboard as we go so you can see the whole thing evolve if you like. So the first thing we're going to calculate are the moles of MnO4- minus used in the titration. So that's the concentration times the volume in decimeters cubed and that comes out at 7.6 times 10 to the minus 4. And we use the mole ratio in the redox equation 
to calculate the moles of hydrogen peroxide present in this flask. So that's 5 over 2, look at the ratio, 5 to 2, times the moles of MnO4 minus ions, and that comes out at 1.9 times 10 to the minus 3. And now we've got to factor in this, this scaling amount. So remember, this, these moles here are the moles in the 25 that was used in the titration, but the original solution, this solution here, is actually 10 times that, so the moles of H2O2 in there is obviously 10 times the moles in, in here. So that comes out at 1.9 times 10 to the minus 2. The next part of the calculation can sometimes cause problems. So you can see I've written up here the moles of hydrogen peroxide in the original solution is also 1.9 times 10 to the minus 2. And the only way I can think to explain this um, in a sort of, you know, everyday example is if that was an alcoholic drink, so it could be some vodka, if you had that quantity of vodka there and put it into a bigger glass and just topped it up with Coke, you're still consuming the same amount of vodka. So the moles in here are the same as the moles in there. So now we know that the moles are the same as what we've got here. We know the volume, this is 25 cm cubed of, and there's this many moles present. We can turn that into a concentration. The concentration is the moles divided by the volume in decimeters cubed, and that comes out with a concentration of 0.76 moles per decimeter cubed.